Hello and welcome to Life on Board Amy Jo. And in this episode, we're going to be climbing up some of the most iconic blocks on the network. Located on the Leicester branch of the Grand Union Canal, join us as we climb the Foxton Locks. Yes, in this episode, we leave our mooring at Market Harbour Basin and continue back down the Market Harbour Arm to Foxton Junction where we'll go through the swing bridge and then turn left into the bottom lock of the flight. But first we have to travel through the swing bridge at the end of the Market Harbour Arm and make a left turn past Lock 61 Iconic Pub and then into the bottom chamber of the Foxton Locks. Here we go, bottom lock, Foxton locks. And the lockies are on today, so we should be good. Well, we've got some lockies on helping us in these first two locks, but then we're on our own after that. So Chris is just checking with them to make sure she knows the procedure correctly. And then we're on our own for the rest of the way. It's gonna be good fun. Use the uh, camera moving around. It's actually the boat. And of course this is the site everybody sees on the pictures. The top five of the Hoxton locks with the lock keeper's cottage at the top. We're just waiting for the chamber on the next flight to empty. And I've been told to stay put until he opens the gates, which he's doing now. So once the gates are open, I can come across. side pounds, a bit like the ones at Bratch Locks, to conserve water. Hence why you have red paddles, 
white paddles. White paddles drain the lock into the pound. Red locks fill the chamber below. And many a vlogger has mentioned the uh, saying, white before, red before white, you'll be all right. White before red, you'll end up dead. Now the view from below the locks, it's fabulous. Well, this is the last lock and I've timed it. It's exactly 40 minutes. So we've done really well. The trouble is it's gone all too quick because I've enjoyed this. got to say thank you to our lockies on today they've followed us all the way through the locks and uh, they've done every lock for us with Chris just helping on the offside so uh, grateful thanks to these guys and of course once you get to the top lock the views are to die for absolutely stunning views even better for the fact that the sun's come out it threatened with rain earlier but at least we got it dry Did you not I was in the last but one lock we're now in the top lock and much better views from up this one look at that We're moored up on the visitor moorings just above Foxton Locks. The locks are literally just around the bend there to the left, about 100 yards. But point of interest, we thought it was a winding hole, but we've actually discovered that that little inlet there was actually the course of the old canal, or rather the new canal, and the inclined plane. If you'd have carried on down there, if you'd have carried on down there, you would have come to the inclined plane and could have dropped down through there and come out below the locks. So from that uh, section I showed you where the inclined plane starts, we're now on the course of the canal towards the inclined plane. And it runs through here in that direction. Boats would have come through underneath this bridge, which wouldn't have been here, and across to that section there, and you can just make out that's the top of the inclined plane going down. And all that's left of the inclined plane now are the track beds of the trolleys that used to take the caissons down the slope. This slope is actually the inclined plane, and it would meet or end down at the bottom there where the boats are. Now there would have been two caissons. That's the base for the other one there, just down here by the trees. And basically when one was coming down, one would go up. And a bit like the Anderton lift, both caissons would be evenly balanced and it wouldn't take that much steam power to actually move the caissons. But sadly, as you can see, there's not a lot left now. Below here, you can see the grooves 
of concrete where the track rails would have laid in and would have guided the caissons coming up. Sadly only the rails for the caissons exist on the side of the hill next to the locks but in the Foxton Museum there is a model which clearly shows how the inclined plane used to work. In the days of commercial carrying the two five step staircase locks at Foxton on this Leicester section of the Grand Union Canal proved to be a bottleneck causing congestion and long waits for the flight. One solution to the problem was the construction of an inclined plane to carry craft up and down the 75 foot change in levels required at the Watford Gap. The inclined plane was designed by Gordon Cale Thomas and was constructed in 1900 by W. H. Gwynn of Hammersmith, London. The lift remained in continuous use until it was mothballed in 1911 due to the lack of sufficient traffic to justify the high maintenance costs and to warrant the boiler being kept in steam. Subsequently the lift was dismantled in 1928 and the equipment sold off for scrap. Even though the lift has been dismantled for many years the site of the inclined plane has been cleared of vegetation and the original position of the steel rails can clearly be seen. There was a proposal to recreate the lift on the original site using modern technology and materials which would be superior to those used in the original, but funding for the project was never forthcoming and the restoration is, is now unlikely to happen. Soon it was time to leave our moorings at the top of the Foxton Locks and carry on our journey. This time we were heading towards the Welford Arm and we're hoping to find some moorings just after the junction. When cruising along in the trees we tend to forget just how high this canal is. But just look at those views. Stunning views. Yeah, what do you mean my row 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 row? Even Smudge likes the views because he's just said about it. <laughs> That was Robert and Jewel Penderton and their boat Chrissy. The boat's up for sale and will be uh, a showboat at the Crick Boat Show. Now we're in the Husband's Bosworth Tunnel and it says it's two-way traffic. I'm dreading meeting another boat coming the other way because it's not that wide. Opened in 1813, Husband's Bosworth Canal Tunnel is 1166 yards long, with no ventilation shafts. The tunnel pierces the watershed between the Warwickshire Avon to the south and the Saw Valley to the north. The bore is brick lined, generally dry and straight with no towing path. Two way working is carried out on the tunnel, in the tunnel, and narrow boats of standard width can pass each other within the tunnel. But as I said, I wouldn't like to meet one coming the other way. And 
another tunnel under our belt. That was Husband's Bosworth Tunnel. And it wasn't too bad. We expected it to be wet. But uh, it was relatively dry, to be fair. So uh, we've, uh, we're going to make a short stop now at North Kilworth Marina. We're going to get it pumped out and uh, get some diesel as well. We need that. So, uh, and then we're going to carry on and we're going to try and get moored up at Welford. Um, we're making good time, so we should uh, get there. Well, Has it cut the top of your head off? No. <laughs> well, that's it for this one, folks. I hope you enjoyed that. Um, the Foxton Locks are certainly an experience to uh, go through. And where we've ended up at the Welford Arm there, at the entrance, that was the very first <laughs> spot we stopped the first time we took Amy Jo out. And that was an adventure, wasn't it? Oh, it was. What was it? She was launched in November. So it was sort of like December. possibly December, <laughs> January time. And we decided we'd just take a... Weekend trip over to the Welford Arm. We didn't go up the Welford Arm. We wanted to win. <laughs> it's only about an hour from uh, from Crick Marina, where yeah. Amy Joe was originally based. So we decided to win in the entrance to the Welford Arm. Plenty of room, we thought. Round we go. No, we got stuck. The bow literally got stuck. Had we got any poles or anything on board? No couldn't push ourselves off the only thing we got was a broom wasn't it i'd got yeah. the broom so we oh well tried to push ourselves off with the broom but the handle basically off. <laughs> amy joe straddled the entrance to the yeah. welford arm so had we not been able to get her off we'd have we closed were. the welford arm <laughs> but as you do yeah fortunately thanks to chris and her broom yeah, we did get off. <laughs> we did manage to get <laughs> I off. broke the broom, but never mind. The, the best of it is, there was a boat moored up on the moorings, and as we pulled in, the bloke said, I wouldn't have winded there. <laughs> you live and learn, don't you? Live and you? Learn, yeah. It was our first ever trip on our own, believe it or not. We haven't done it since. We've no, we've been not. very careful. <laughs> as you will see. So uh, that's it, folks. We'll, uh, we'll stop yabbering on and uh, look after yourselves. Do take care. Please give us a thumbs up if uh, you enjoyed the vlog. Yes. That really helps us. Uh, subscribe. And subscribe, yeah, and press the notification and, bell yeah. for future vlogs. And we're actually filming this inside the pram hood at the back of Amy Joe. Yeah. Because we're currently moored on the Grand Union Canal, just north of London, and it's 39 <laughs> degrees outside. So we're trying to find some shade. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, enough yabbering. Yes. Take care, and we'll see you next time on Life on Board Amy Joe. Bye. Bye.